Hey everyone, today I want to give you a quick demo on how to test asynchronous functions in React using a library called Synon.js. Synon makes it really easy to test asynchronous functions through the use of spies and stubs and it's really useful for writing tests because you don't want to run asynchronous functions during your tests. If a server goes down then your tests fail, which is not a good thing. So we're going to be looking mostly at stubs today and a stub is basically a function with pre, some pre-programmed behavior. And they're inspectable so you can see how many times they were called, what arguments they were called with, and you can also give some behavior to that stub and tell it to return whatever you want. So here's the demo app and this is just a really basic React app. You can see it's just a single component called app and all it does is on component did mount it's going to call this function called fetch data. Now fetch data is an external function that we pass as a prop and you can see that the default prop for fetch data here is, is this function. And this function makes a network request. So it's making a request to this dummy JSON endpoint to get posts and then this will return a promise. So when this promise resolves, we're going to set the state loaded true and the post with the data that we get back from the network request. And then we just have um, some basic rendering here to render the posts. And this is what the sample app looks like. It's nothing special. You can see that these are the posts that we've rendered. So each one is wrapped in a div. We have the title and the body. Okay, so now it's time to write some tests. I've installed a couple of packages here, Synon of course, and another one called Synon as promised, which I'll talk about in a minute. I've also included Enzyme, which allows us to render components in our tests. So if we flip over to the test file, this is a very bare bones test file, but these are the three things that we want to achieve. So we want to test that it calls fetch data on component mount. So when the component mounts, it will call our component did mount function, which will call fetch data. That's what we want to test in this case here. The next one is it sets the component state to return data. So that's testing the second step of the promise. When the promise resolves, we want to test that the state gets set properly. And thirdly, we want to test that it calls the post endpoint. So this is saying, we want to make sure that this fetch data function calls this function here, this axios.get function, with this URL. That's what we want to test. Okay, so let's get started. So let's look at the first case. We want to mount the component somehow. And to do that, I'm going to call a function called mount that we get from Enzyme. That's going to do a full mount of the component, which includes running the component did mount function, which is what we want to achieve. And it's as easy as that to mount the component. Const component equals mount app. Now we have a reference to component, but we want to see if the fetch state function is called. So you'll notice that in the component, I pass in fetch data as a prop. And I did that on purpose because it makes it easy to test. So all we have to do here is just pass in a fetch data function and then we can inspect this function and see what happens to it. So this is where Synon comes in. I want to create a fetch data function here and it's going to be a Synon stub and that's basically how you make a stub. So now this fetch data function is inspectable and I can see how many times it gets called and things like that. So let's go ahead and pass fetch data in here. And now we want to check that this fetch data function has been called. So there's a property on fetch data called call count and you can look at that in the documentation. But basically we want to see if this equals one. And if it does, it means that when we mounted the app, it called fetch data. So let's jump over to the terminal and see if this passes.
So one failed, that doesn't look good. What's happening here? It says cannot read property then of undefined. So I think I know what's happening here. What happens is this returns a promise, remember? So it's, it's expecting a then function on fetch data, which it doesn't have because this is just a basic stub, it's just an empty function. So what we wanna do is we wanna return something here. And you can return something from a stub just by saying returns and then true, false, you know, whatever you want it to be. Um, in this case, we wanna return a new promise and I could type out this in its full, you know, promise, resolve, reject, give a function, all of that. But I said I'd talk about Synon as promise before, and this is quite powerful. It provides some helper functions on stubs and spies to enable us to return promises pretty easily because it turns out it's a pretty common thing to do. So. I'm gonna go ahead and require sin as promised here. And then I can just call resolves here, like that. So this will now return a new promise which will resolve something empty, but it should be enough to get us out of trouble here with the test. So if we go back, yeah, you can see this is passing now. So that's great. Let's look at the second test now. In this test, we want to see if the component state is set to the data that's returned from the fetch data function. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this in here. We still wanna keep the fetch data stub um, and we also wanna pass it in, but our test is gonna be a little different. We really wanna look at the component state and you can do that with enzyme by referencing the state function here. I can say the component state, we wanna check that loaded is equal to false, sorry, to true, um, loaded is true. And we also wanna check that the state posts is equal to some data, right? Some data that, that this function returns. So how are we gonna return something from this? Well, we've already seen that we can resolve a promise. So let's just create some dummy data here. Let's just say there's some post data. It's an array of, of um, objects here with ID, title, and body. That's what our component is expecting. And then we can j just say this stub resolves post data. So now our stub is gonna get called when this app launches, um, mount, sorry. And it's going to set our state loaded true, and it's gonna set post to, hopefully to this here. Um, in actual fact, we have to wrap this dummy data in a uh, another object here. So uh, we gotta say that data, post data, like that. Okay, so let's check out the test here. Okay, we got a failing test. Uh, expected false to equal true. So it looks like our state isn't getting set, but you have to remember that state set state in a React component happens in a queue. So we're mounting this component and then we're not waiting any time at all to check the state. So what we wanna do is we wanna wait for this to go to the next tick so then we can see that the state has been changed. So we can do this with um, async await. And if you haven't heard of async await, you can go read about it. But essentially what it's saying is this is an async function and we're going to wait for whatever is happening in this function, whatever mounting work is happening here, we wanna wait for that before moving to the next line. Okay, so if we save that, we can see our test passes, yay. So we're checking the state and it's got the data that's been returned from this function and it's set it as this post state of the function. Okay, so let's look at the last case here.
We want to test that the post endpoint calls the right endpoint. So we're saying that this function here is going to call this base URL and posts. So I'm going to show you another cool trick with stubs, and that is the option to wrap a function. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to import Axios, and we're going to stub the axios.get function. So with stub, you can give it an argument, which is the object that you want to stub and the, the function on that object. So we're going to stub get, and that's all we need to do. So now we can just call fetch data, and you can see that I've exported it here. So I can now go over to my test and I can import, actually, let's do it here. I can import fetch data and I want to get the base URL too. I'm going to use that. And then I can just say fetch data. There you go. So this is not going to make a network request because I've already stubbed this function. So this is effectively going to do nothing except track what happens when this function gets called. So now I want to check and see if this axios.get function is getting called with the right argument. And Synon provides some useful properties here. First call is going to give all the information about the first call of this function. And we want to get the args here, and we're just going to get the first arg. This is going to be an array. So I expect that the first and only arg is going to equal the base URL slash post. Okay. And another important thing when you stub uh, an external function is to restore that function, sorry, axios.get, restore that function when you're done with it. Otherwise, when you try and, or if you try and wrap it again, it's gonna throw an error. So let's flip over to here and you can see, yep. So we've tested that function. It did not make a network request and it called the right URL here. So as you can see, Synon is quite powerful for testing asynchronous calls and it's a pretty common use case in React to do this kind of work, fetch some data, and then set it as the state of the component. So using Synon makes it really easy and powerful to create tests like these. We just talked about the stub function in Synon, but there's quite a few other cool things you can do like spies and mocks, and I really encourage you to look at the docs and check that stuff out. Thanks for watching.